Silk tests data-driven assistant using the classic agent. Uh, what we're going to cover today is um, recording a test case and making that test case data-driven. Uh, really easy uh, to follow steps through the data-driven assistant. We're going to go ahead and uh, select the menu item uh, data-driven tests and then we're going to go through step-by-step -step, uh, through the uh, the assistant which will help us name the uh, data-driven test, select the data source uh, that we plan to use, and then go ahead and substitute out the fields for the uh, the static fields in the test case for the data elements within the test case. And then of course we'll run the test. So here's the test case I've already created and what we're going to do is substitute out the, the name and the address have these static letters in them, uh, the letter R, and what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and replace that or substitute that with the information from an Excel spreadsheet. And let me just show you the data in the spreadsheet. So here's the spreadsheet and notice we have the first record are the uh, column labels. So first, last, address, city, zip. And then I have three records of test data. So from uh, this point what we do is we go up to tools, data driven test case, and we just step through the dialogues. So which test case do we want to make data driven? We only have the one right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of the original test case and we're going to make that copy data driven. We don't actually touch the original test case. So I'll click OK here. And now I'm going to go ahead and browse to my data source. And I am going to read from an Excel spreadsheet. But here you can see you can actually select from any ODBC data source. So I'm going to browse and there's my spreadsheet right there. And I'll click OK. And now what do you want to call the data driven test? And by default, uh, Silk Test uh, attaches a DD underscore for data driven to the original test case name. From here, all we do is we step through uh, with the Find Next button. And the Find Next button will stop at uh, the uh, text fields. All right, so I'm just going to click Find Next. Find Next until I get to a field that I want to replace and there's the first field and I'm going to go ahead and pick the the first name column data and click replace and find next and the address replace find next the city replace find next the state okay and replace and now in order to get rid of this dialog I'm done replacing the data I'm going to click the cancel button in this dialog and now I'm ready to run the test case Notice now I have two test cases to run, the data driven and non data driven, and I have a new button over here with the data driven test called specify rows. Granted, I'm reading from a data source that has three records in it, but maybe you're going to read from a data source, that, data source that has potentially millions of records in it. What we do is we give you a query building tool here. So you could limit uh, or filter the data that you plan to use for your data driven test. So I could maybe uh, use the first name and greater than or equal to some value and I can also and and or uh, those uh, parameters together to limit my search even further. But I, I'm going to go ahead and run for all three records in my data source. Now go ahead and click the run button and you'll see here it's going to drive the browser and it won't type the letter R. There's the first record data from the data source. the second set of data and the third set and at the end of the execution it shows you the test data that was used during each execution so if there was a failure during one of the test executions you know exactly what test data was being used when the failure occurred so to uh, recap we went ahead and uh, uh, selected the menu item to make a test case data driven. We stepped through the uh, uh, the, the dialogues for uh, uh, configuring that data driven test and we ran the test.